Hey guys, Britt here. Welcome to End Times Bible Prophecy. Make sure to hit the subscribe, like, and share buttons. Well, what we're going to talk about today is beyond bad. And we're going to look at some data to confirm that. This isn't my hypothesis. This is basic math. It is an absolute certainty that what we're going to see is really just catastrophic. And while it is not based on the debt ceiling, which we're going to look at right here. I want to pull this up and talk a little bit about this because this leads into what is what we're talking about, which is just beyond bad. But I want to touch on this and you'll see why, because we're going to tie this up at the end and how this could even be worse than the beyond bad that we think, but it's definitely bad. So we had this article here that says Janet Yellen, it's U.S. Treasury Secretary to meet with Jamie Dimon, CEO of J.P. Morgan Chase, and other bank CEOs on Thursday as debt ceiling crisis looms. And of course, all of Washington is claiming, you know, the whole world's going to fall apart if we default on our ob the U.S. obligations. We've seen this in the past. Washington likes to play this game every few years where they get together and they claim they're not going to raise the debt ceiling. They negotiate back and forth. It's this game of chicken who will blink first. And all, in the past, they've always resolved this before the deadline. So it's just a bunch of talk in the media and then they resolve this and it's a non-issue as far as default on the U.S. debt. So I would expect that's probably what's going to happen here, but it's not a certainty. So let's look at this article right here. This is from Zero Hedge. It says, much of the markets still don't believe the U.S. can default. And for the same reasons that I just said, there, neither political party is going to want to do this. The... Uh, after effects of doing that may, may be beyond what they even know. Who knows what sort of derivatives would unravel in the global financial markets if that happened. So we don't necessarily know how bad it would be if that were to happen. So therefore, I doubt that it would happen. However, as you can see here, some people think that it will happen. So it says, meanwhile, Credit default swaps, so credit default swaps, that's essentially a, a contract that's traded, it much, acts much like insurance against default, so that if that event happens, the holder of that contract gets a payoff, and they use that to try to hedge their risk against that happening. So it says, credit default swaps are pricing in a 3% chance of a default. While that may not seem alarming, that default pricing is way higher than in 2011 and 2013 when we were last witness to such stress. So let's take a bigger look at this chart. You can get an idea here of the last time these debt ceiling negotiations went on and how much more the market is pricing in the idea that there might actually be a default this time. So. Will there be? Again, I doubt it, but let's hold on to that thought for just a moment because, again, the market is telling us maybe that's not the case. So let's get to, again, this isn't the beyond bad that I'm talking about. This is just the lead into that. So we'll get to that on the next chart after this, but this is from the Federal Reserve Bank of St. Louis. This is data right here showing the U.S. national debt. And as you can see, the data they have going back here, it was $320 billion back in 1966. As of the end of 2022, we stand at $31.4 trillion. So the U.S. national debt is $31.4 trillion. That's just what we owe. It does not include unfunded future liabilities such as Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid, all those future payments, which adds up to well over $100 trillion. So, so the U.S. Is, is beyond bankrupt, no doubt about it. But here we go on. This is what I'm talking about when I say this is beyond bad, and we're going to explain why. Here we have a chart on interest payments on 
that $31.4 trillion in debt. And as you can see, as of the end of the first quarter of this year, those interest payments were an annualized $928 billion. So this is about 50% higher than a year earlier when they were $603 billion. So we've gone in the course of one year from $603 billion in interest payments to $928 billion. And it's certain that by the time we get to the second quarter data, we'll be over a trillion dollars for those interest payments. Now, why is this? Well, we, we've talked in the past about the annual rise in the Fed funds rate. So the Federal Reserve has been hiking interest rates in order to combat inflation. At least that's their stated goal. We'll come to that here in a moment as well. But they've been doing that. And of course, the $31.4 trillion in national debt has to be refinanced every several years. It's financed based on debt, government bonds that mature at different times. So anywhere from one month to 10 years out, it, there are all sorts of different uh, date, maturity dates that the debt is financed on. So 30% of that $31.4 trillion has to be refinanced in the next 12 months at these higher rates. So that means that this number of $928 billion in interest payments is going to continue to skyrocket. Now, what could bring that, what could possibly bring that down? Well, some people might say, well, if the interest rates went back down, they got cut back down to zero. But keep in mind, what would cause that to happen? Well, the only thing that could cause the Federal Reserve to do that would simply be a catastrophic finance collapse of the financial system, frankly, that would cause them to cut those rates. And if they did that, you're likely to see a stock market crash. You're going to see unemployment through the roof. You're going to see all sorts of things that would make tax receipts go lower, government spending go higher, and you would likely see the interest on the debt continue to go up. There's also no guarantee that simply because the Fed, Federal Reserve says we're lowering rates that the market is going to agree. Remember, all this debt is held by other nations, private individuals. They may say, no, we're not buying your debt you're on your $31.4 trillion and counting uh, debt pile at 0% interest rates. You're going to pay us 6%, 7%, 8%, 10%. The market will determine that. And the only way that the government could prevent that from happening would simply be for the Federal Reserve to go buy that debt in the marketplace. Japan has been doing this by printing dollars in order to buy the debt and keep the interest on the national debt lower. Think of the implications of that. They're printing dollars out of thin air. That means more dollars. That means more inflation. And of course, more inflation is going to make people demand higher interest rates for that debt, which means the government would have to simply buy all of the debt, this, this is going to cause a debt doom loop. So if there's any doubt about that, let's look at this chart here. This shows the annual deficit. So we've this is what's added each year to the $31.4 trillion. And as you can see, in 2019, we're at about a trillion dollars of deficit. Because of the pandemic, you had tax receipts lower, but you also had all these pandemic programs, free cash for everybody, stimulus checks for everybody. Oh, just print, print, print. $3.1 trillion <laughs> annual deficit. So think about that. The deficit we just saw was is, is now $31.4 trillion is the national debt. So this one deficit, so the 2020 annual deficit was over 10% of the national debt in one year. But 
you know, got better. Maybe we have handed out fewer STEMI checks in 2021 and, and some businesses decided not to close. So it was only 2.7 trillion that year. And then last year, hey, we're back in business. Only 1.3 trillion dollar budget deficit that year that gets tacked onto the national debt. But the question I want to ask you is, because this seems to be trending in the correct direction, you would think, but what happens if we see a recession, maybe a severe recession, even a depression? What happens if we have a stock market crash, if we have high unemployment and tax re receipts plummet and government spending on food stamps and unemployment insurance and all sorts of other programs goes up, which is exactly what we saw during the Great Recession. So we see here and going into 2000, so 2007, the annual deficit was $160 billion. 2008, it's $458 billion. So we're heading into this Great Recession where the government spending is going up, the tax receipts are falling. And then we see that tripled a year later to $1.4 trillion. And we had four straight years of trillion dollar deficits. What happens when this annual deficit of $1.3 trillion triples in a single year because of a financial crisis? Now we have $4 trillion annual deficits being tacked on to $31.4 trillion in debt, being refinanced at higher rates, we have a death doom loop. Because again, the only way they would be able to keep that, let's, let's go back and look at this. The only way they would be able to keep this line from going straight up forever is to simply buy all of the government debt. Even then, <laughs> guys, this is this is beyond bad. It means it's this is the end game. This is the end game. The question is, how long can they keep it going? Is it a matter of weeks, months, maybe a few years? I don't know, but this is all unraveling. It means the United States uh, financial system and the global financial system that we all are tied into is unraveling. It's being destroyed because if they if they go out and try to keep these interest rates low and try to keep this under control, again, the only way they can do that is to print dollars to buy the government debt. When they do that, they will create hyperinflation and then it just builds and builds and builds. It's It's no matter what they do, the outcome is the same. So let's look at this chart right here. We've talked about this before, because I think this shows us where we're going and why the system is going to unravel, guys. The, this doesn't mean that you're gonna have a complete collapse and meltdown of society. It means that the financial system is going to hmm, reset. You understand that? So it's going to unravel. It cannot continue on as it has. And therefore, it will reset into something new. So here we have, this is the Fed funds rate. So when you hear them, hear them talk about, well, the Federal Reserve is raising rates, this shows us the year-over-year -year percentage change, which previously, going back decades of data, the highest it had ever gone up in a year was 410%. Well, now, you know, the year over year comparison isn't as big because it's <laughs> comparing year over year where they had already started hiking rates in March 2022. Oh, we're only at 1,363% now, down from the high of 5,612% change. But this quick change when they keep talking in the media about, oh, there's going to be a soft landing for the economy. Well, we're not in a recession. <laughs> there's no problems. Everything's wonderful. But there's going to be a soft landing and you go, well, why do you need a soft landing if everything's so wonderful? Don't worry, soft landings coming. No, they're going to fly into the side of a mountain is what I've been saying. And 
I've been showing this chart for months and saying this is a sign that the system is broken and something is going to break soon. And of course, we've seen that with the banking system. We've had three of the four largest bank failures in U.S. history occur in the last two months. And yet people seem to be totally unaware of this. We had Credit Suisse fail and had a forced buyout by the next largest bank in Switzerland. That was a global, systemically important bank that if it had failed, we would have seen the collapse of the financial system at that point in time. So they keep pushing this off. I don't know that they can keep continue to do this. So again, these bank failures that are you know directly attributable to this spike in interest rates. This, you know, again, the interest rates, it, you, you look at it, the Fed funds rate that they had, oh, well, it's on, only at 5%. It's been higher in the past, but they it was a, just a shade over zero a little more than a year ago. So it's the rapid pace of change that's taken place. And a lot of these banks couldn't adjust. And we see that in the data. So this shows unrealized gains, which is really losses lately. Uh, this is from the FDIC. This is U the U.S. banking system, so the securities that they hold on hand. So when people go and they withdraw cash from a bank, the bank has to sell some of its securities in order to meet the regulated capital requirements of the bank or else they're declared insolvent. They go into bankruptcy, the FDIC takes over. So the FDIC likes to keep track of this information. Well, let's look over here. This is the great financial crisis, guys. <laughs> so the terrible great financial crisis, the worst, worst economic downturn since the Great Depression up to that point in time. I would argue we're already beyond that now. Here's where we are as of 2022. You know, I don't think this data is up to date. The most recent figures I've seen say $620 billion in unrealized losses by the banking system. Now, what does that mean, these unrealized losses? Well, it means they bought the security for, say, a dollar. Now it's worth 80, 70 cents. There's an unrealized loss because they haven't been forced to sell it yet. But if for whatever reason, they start taking losses on other parts of their portfolio. If people start defaulting on their auto loans, their mortgages, we have commercial real estate that has to be refinanced at these higher rates as well. And we know that there's large vacancies in these commercial real estate properties. So as those losses start to hit, they may be forced to sell some of these securities. Well, let me put it this, they will be forced to sell these securities for a loss. And therefore, we will see more and more of these banks going bankrupt. But you know what? They're not alone because the Federal Reserve itself is bankrupt. <laughs> Let's look at this right here, this data. I don't even know what, what they've done here, if, if this is when this, these programs started. Sometimes they take these charts and they start a new one, they rename it and so, so they can eliminate all the past data. But what is this showing? Well, this is showing the Federal Reserve, its earnings remittances. So this is, this is basically, to put it in simple terms, back in, two th back in the great financial crisis, the Federal Reserve came in to banks and other financial institutions and they said, we're gonna buy some of your troubled securities from you. We're gonna buy these mortgage-backed securities. We're gonna buy these loans. We're gonna take them on our books. We'll give you cash for them and we'll hold them. That's what you hear about with the expanding Federal Reserve balance sheet, which they claim they would unwind and they never have. <laughs> But as they collect those mortgage payments and auto loan payments and whatever it is that they're sitting there holding, who knows? But as they collect that interest or those payments, they have essentially a profit. And so they take some of their 
operating costs out of that, and they remit the remainder back to the U.S. Treasury. And so this was positive for the last decade plus. And now look at what has happened, because the balance sheet of the Federal Reserve is doing this is experiencing the same turmoil as all of these banks. The stark rise in interest rates has hurt their portfolio as well. But they don't have to worry about going bankrupt because they can print unlimited dollars. <laughs> so they will never go bankrupt. But again, this should tell us something. This is a sign. Just looking at this right here. You don't have to even know anything about this chart to know that this is a sign that something major is broken, guys. It's absolutely broken. And what happens to this debt doom loop, this house of cards that the United States has created? Frankly, all the governments of the world have created with this fiat currency system. These fake paper promises, not backed by anything. What happens is we go into a recession, and I would argue the greatest downturn since the Great Depression, probably as bad, not as long, but just as bad as we go into that and the unemployment goes up and people start defaulting on their loans. What happens to the budget deficit and the national debt? I believe it will spiral out of control and lead to the death of the dollar. But in the meantime, we're heading into this depression and we've seen the evidence of it. We've looked at this before. This is a chart of M2, they call it M2 money supply. I call it M2 currency supply. This is the amount of currency in circulation in the economy. And they have data going back to the 19th century. But they don't like to put this, put that here and give you any sort of perspective <laughs> to show you. But this is the worst, ne the, this, this data right now, year over year is negative. So we have seen the money, the M2 money supply, currency supply shrink by 4% year over year. That is the worst we've seen on record since the depths of the Great Depression. So that should put it into perspective. This contraction of M2 supply is defined as deflation. It doesn't mean that you're going to see prices fall at the grocery store. It just means a contraction of the currency supply. And that is bad for the economy. It's bad for growth. And it's going to really hurt the economy. And we're seeing that hurting economy. So we see here Market Watch that says credit card debt failed to decline in the first quarter for the first time in over 20 years New York Fed says, U.S. credit card debt appears to be stubbornly holding near a trillion dollars. The Federal Reserve Bank of New York said in its quarterly report on household debt and credit on Monday, in the fourth quarter when credit card debt tends to rise due to holiday shopping, credit card balances hit a whopping $986 billion, surpassing pre-pandemic levels, the Fed said in a report. The first quarter, however, is usually marked by falling credit card debt as consumers pay that off. But that wasn't the case in 2023. Credit card balances held firm at $986 billion. So guys, we're seeing this stress at the consumer level. I'm sure you're feeling it as well. Let me know. Are you, how, are, how are you doing economically? The prices at the grocery store are just... Every, every time I go into the store, the things we regularly buy cost more <laughs> than they did when I was just there four weeks earlier, right? No, it, it's it's constant. They never. It's always going up, and yet they claim, oh well, the inflation. It's only five percent, or inflation's getting under control. Inflation isn't getting under control at the grocery store. I know that much, but. People are finding it harder and harder to get by. The system is broken, guys. Again, this is beyond bad because the United States, I believe, has entered this debt doom loop where no matter what they do, if they try to raise rates and head off inflation, 
They are going to destroy the economy, send us into a catastrophic depression, a deflationary spiral that will just get worse and worse and worse. But if they don't, well, then <laughs> inflation goes haywire. But if they keep those interest rates high, well, then the interest on the national debt becomes more than we collect in tax receipts every year. And then people say, I'm not even going to buy your debt. And the Fed has to buy it, and we see massive hyperinflation. So those are really the two choices. We've been over this before. The government has is they, they can choose, well, would you like massive hyperinflation? Or would you like to completely destroy the economy with a deflationary spiral? Those are the two, two choices. There's no soft landing. Soft landing is not a choice. This is a matter of math, basic math, and looking at how the system works. It is a broken system, and I assure you that it will come to an end. There will be a reset. They will put a new system in place because when we've had these systems in the past, when they come to the end of their life, they're replaced with a new system. What will the new system be? And that brings us back to the very beginning where I was talking about this debt ceiling crisis and how, you know, the consensus is, and it makes sense that, well, they'll find some sort of negotiated compromise at the end, raise the debt ceiling, and it'll be a non-story. But what if they want to have that debt ceiling not raised? What if they want the U.S. to default so that they could then claim that the reason the system is broken is because of the oppositional political party. If, if only they had not done this and forced the U.S. into default, all these terrible things wouldn't have happened. Guys, these, the, the system is broken no matter what. It doesn't matter whether they raise the debt ceiling or not. Catastrophe looms because... The United States government cannot stop spending money or spending currency, all this fake cash they create. They can't stop spending it. The debt is piling up by the trillions, and there is no end in sight. And this means ultimately, I believe, the death of the dollar through hyperinflation at some point in the future. It's not going to be in the near future as in next week. But that will come. The, the system is unraveling, and they know that. And they want to try to cover that up and blame it on something. And so what better way to do that than maybe we do have a default? Because keep in mind, when Joe Biden ran for president, his slogan was, build back better. Well, to build back better implies that what was there before must be torn down. And so I don't think that we can discount the possibility that there will be a debt default. I'm not saying that there will be, but that there may be and that it may be. If, if there is, I believe that is, it is intentional. And the purpose is to reset the system, most likely by forcing us into central bank digital currencies. But regardless, this is, this is coming. This is, even if the debt ceiling is raised tomorrow and there is no default, all of the things we looked at are coming, many of them this year, because the banking system is still bankrupt. The debt is still piling up. The United States government is still bankrupt. They, have, they don't technically default because they can just print dollars to pay back the debt they owe. But that is really default. They've been defaulting on the debt for decades, ever since Nixon closed the gold window, because they're just printing pieces of paper to pay off their IOUs. So they create these pieces of paper and say, here's an IOU. And then they print another piece of paper and say, now we're paying back the IOU with this other IOU. It's This is a Ponzi scheme. It's a system that is broken. It's going to fall apart. And the results, the, the impact of that is going to be catastrophic for the global financial system. Because I cannot overstate that. We keep talking about this, but I hope that you're prepared. I hope that the rapture occurs today 
and we're gone for all of this, but there's no guarantee of that. Make sure you're prepared. Make sure you know the Lord Jesus Christ. Make sure you're reading your Bible every day. Make sure you know your neighbors and have good relationships with your neighbors. Make sure you have a deep pantry. Because again, the, in the 1930s, in the Great Depression, they had a banking holiday. The banks were shut down for an entire week. You could not make financial transactions through a bank. Imagine what would happen if your credit card, your debit card didn't work. You couldn't do any banking whatsoever for a week, two weeks, three weeks. Would you be okay? Do you have enough food on hand? Do you have enough gasoline in your car? Do you have, what do you need right now that you don't have on hand? I would encourage you to make sure that you stay stockpiled on all of those things. You don't have to hoard things, but just make sure you have a little bit extra, have a deep pantry. Look out for yourself, look out for your family, because this is going to get bad, very bad as the year goes on, in my opinion. I don't. Maybe they'll be able to kick the can down the road a little bit further, but I don't think so. I think they were able to kick the can down the road 15 years ago and all the times before because inflation was not out of control. Well, now the market is saying no. That's what, that's what the inflation means is the market saying no. And now no matter what path the government chooses, the bad decisions have been baked into the cake. Decades and decades of terrible decisions, bad policy making is already baked into the cake. There's no way out at this point. The two choices are devastating deflationary spiral and hyperinflation. There's no soft landing. This is going to be bad. So let me know what you think. Leave your comments below. Make sure to like and share this. And God willing, I will see you on Friday. Bye. If you want to learn more about the end times and Bible prophecy, make sure to sign up for my free monthly newsletter and get your copy of my free ebook, Seven Signs of the End Times. Just follow the link in the description to get your free book. Also, make sure to check out all of my books. Just look up Brit Gillette on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, Apple iBooks, Google Books, Kobo, or anywhere books are sold. Thanks for watching today, and until next time, keep your eyes fixed on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith.